Now that we have uh, completed the external features and we have seen all the cranial nerves which are related to the medulla. Now moving on, we will have a look at the internal structure of the medulla. So if you want to look at the internal structure of the medulla, we will take cut sections at three different levels. Because you know medulla is not the same throughout. It is having a closed part, it is having an open part and different uh, nuclei are present at different levels. So in order to discuss the internal structure, we will take sections at three different levels. So the first level is at the level of pyramidal decussation. I told you there is crossing over of the corticospinal tract fibers at this level. So we are taking one section at the level of pyramidal decussation. And then we will take one more section at the level of the sensory decussation at the lower limit of the olives. So one more section at the level of sensory decussation and we will take one more section at the level of olives so at the level of olivary nucleus at the level of olives so we are taking three transverse sections transverse sections of the medulla one is at the level of pyramidal decussation that is at the lower level and in the middle we are taking one section at the level of the sensory decussation and in the upper level we are taking a section at the level of the olives now let us discuss in detail what are all the features present in each level so now let us have a look at the section of the medulla at the level of the pyramidal decussation that is at the lower level of the medulla so we are taking a transverse section at the lower level of the medulla so what are all the features so this is how the TS of the medulla will look at the level of pyramidal decussation so as you all know just like the spinal cord the medulla also will have the central grey matter surrounded by the peripheral white matter. So you can see this is the central canal just similar to the uh, spinal uh, section of the spinal cord. So this is the anterior horn and there are few modifications in the posterior horn of the grey matter. So when you take a section of the medulla at the level of the pyramidal uh, decussation, the posterior part of the grey matter, you see it is being elongated to form two horns, two horns, two. Uh, these are called as nucleus gracilis and this is called as nucleus cuneatus. So this is the ventral aspect and this is the dorsal aspect. So you relate this here, this is the dorsal aspect of the medulla. We have seen the uh, gracile tubercle and we have seen the cuneate tubercle. So the medial most is gracile and later to that we have seen the cuneate tubercle and later to that we have seen one more elevation which is called as tuber cinerium. So this gracile tubercle is overlying this nucleus gracilis and this cuneate tubercle is overlying this nucleus cuneatus and this tuber cinerium will overlie this, this part. This. So if you look carefully, the posterior horn of the medulla, it is uh, modifying to form the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and it is being capped by one structure which is the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve. But now the spinal nucleus and spinal tract will produce an elevation in the exterior which we were referring to as the tuber cinerium in the dorsal view of the medulla. So uh, this is the posterior part of the grey matter. Now we will have a look at the white matter. What is present in the white matter? So as you all know within the white matter we will have fibers and within the grey matter we will have nuclei. So what is present in the white matter of the medulla? So you can see two tracks which are being seen over here. So these are referred to as the spinocerebellar tracts. So which extend from the spinal cord to the cerebellum. So this is the dorsal spinocerebellar tract and this is the ventral spinocerebellar tract. 
and then medial to that you see one more tract which is present this is called as the lateral spinothalamic tract so this lateral spinothalamic tract is the one which carries the pain and temperature sensations from the trunk and the limbs so we see the dorsal spinocerebellar tract we are seeing the ventral spinocerebellar tract and we are seeing the lateral spinothalamic tract in the lateral part of the white matter in the posterior part of the white matter we see uh, capping this nucleus gracilis this is the funiculus gracilis and this is called as funiculus cuneatus so we have seen continuation of the gracile tubercle as fasciculus gracilis and uh, continuation of the cuneate tubercle as fasciculus cuneatus so these form the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus which will form the posterior columns which are responsible for the position and vibration sense so in the uh, white matter so these are the fibers which we see and then now if you have a look at the anterior aspect so this is the anterior aspect or the ventral view of the medulla so in the ventral view we have seen just uh, lateral to the anteromedial fissure so this is the anteromedial fissure so just lateral to that we have seen two elevations which we have called them as pyramids so here we have got the pyramids so this is the place for the pyramids okay so what happens the cortico spinal tract which is there the fibers they will pass backwards and they will cross over there is you can see there is crossing over of the fibers so because of this crossing over we have seen here that the anteromedial fissure is being disturbed it is now becoming discontinuous so there is a crossing over of 75 to 80% of the fibers of the cortico spinal tract so they pass backwards and they cross over each other and they form the lateral cortico spinal tract so this is the lateral cortico spinal tract so this lateral cortico spinal tract you can see it in the sections of the spinal cord later on after this so the crossing over of the fibers cortico spinal tract it will take place at this level so that is why we are describing this section as ts at the level of the pyramidal decussation so that is the major event which is occurring at this level so because of this crossing over the lateral cortico spinal tract is formed next because of this crossing over and pa uh, passage of these cortico spinal tract fibers you see the anterior horn which is the anterior horn of the gray matter is being cut off so it is being cut off so this anterior horn of the gray matter which is being cut off it will form the spinal nucleus of the accessory nerve and it will form the supra spinal nucleus of the first cervical nerve okay so uh, it is forming the spinal nucleus of the accessory nerve which will descend up to the fifth cervical uh, spinal uh, segment and then it is forming the supra spinal nucleus of the first cervical nerve so these are all the features which you see in relation to the transverse section of the medulla at the level of pyramidal decussation so if you remember the external features and if you rem uh, Uh, correlate it with the internal structure it is very easy for you to remember so i am just giving a uh, synopsis of the whole thing so this is the central gray matter surrounded by the white matter in the central gray matter the posterior part of the gray matter is elongating to form two columns uh, which will form the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus and the posterior horn is forming the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve which is capped by the spinal tract of the
trigemina now and then the anterior uh, horn of the gray matter after being detached because of the crossing over of the pyramidal fibers it will form the spinal nucleus of the accessory nerve and supraspinal nucleus of the first cervical nerve so these are what you see in the gray matter now what about the white matter as i told you in the white matter we will see the nerve fibers so in the white matter you see the fasciculus gracilis overlying the nucleus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus and then you see dorsal spinal cervical tract and ventral spinal cervical tract and you see the lateral spinal thalamic tract and the major event which is happening here is the crossing over of the cortico spinal tract fibers which will form the lateral cortico spinal tract so remember not all the fibers of the cortico spinal tract will cross over only 75 to 80 percent will cross over and they will form the lateral cortico spinal tract remaining 20 percent they will continue on the same side and they will continue as the anterior cortico spinal tract so this is in detail about the section of the uh, medulla at the level of the pyramidal decussation